Hi there, it's Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures, and in this week's video, we are going to discuss three examples of bias when AI systems are used in cybersecurity solutions. So before we get into these three examples, we need to talk about bias in, in general. Typically, when you have a system designed to detect things, you have two types of bias. You have intentional bias, you have unintentional bias, right? If you're building a radar and you're trying to detect a MiG-29, then uh, when it detects a MiG-29, things are working good. But if it's an F-18, it's misidentified, that's unintentional bias, and that's a false positive. And you can have examples of both false positives and false negatives when things like F-18s are detected as MiG-29s. And there's a lot of these examples that are, that are out there. It's no difference with AI versus a radar system versus even... If I go back to the late 90s, early 2000s, when we were doing Dragon, we did not have artificial intelligence. We wrote pattern matching rules, a lot of regular expressions and, and, and whatnot. And we would research what was a unique fingerprint of, uh, of a malware system. And when we saw that fingerprint, we assumed that there was malware. But you know, with more data and more situations in, 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 in live networks, sometimes those malware signatures show up when people are downloading you know, social media images and, 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 and whatnot. So there's always better ways to detect things. And this is not something new for artificial intelligence. So when you have an artificial intelligence system and you train it to find something, you still have those abilities to look at false positives and false negatives based on your training data and you know what's in the real world. So having said that, knowing that there's uh, you know these two types of false positives and bias in AI systems, I really thought a lot about how does this apply to cybersecurity? And there's a couple examples I want to go over. So the first one is bias that your vendor has that you might not know about. So now imagine you're a, a Microsoft customer, and I could pick on Microsoft, I could pick on Palo Alto, anybody who's got a platform, right, where they have all of this, these sensors and devices that can do cybersecurity things. Maybe you're not using it correctly. Maybe you could be turning on prevention in your, uh, you know, intrusion prevention systems. Maybe you could do outbound filtering in your firewalls. Maybe you could be doing more with DNS. Maybe you could be doing a lot more. But because of the complexity of the platform, using AI is a great strategy to help customers who aren't trained in all that stuff to use more of that. Well, you get this is where you get into some bias, right? A Microsoft AI and a Microsoft platform is only going to really recommend to you more Microsoft stuff. It's not going to say, hey, there's a brand new startup over here or this thing that you just bought from us you could get from an open source point of view or a new startup or something along uh, something along those lines. And, and this type of bias is really going to uh, cement what I call vendor lock-in, right? If you actually go down the road of buying, going all in with a platform and you're trying to make the use of that, you're going to be happy about this. But one of the things we talk about with AI, AI all the time is it takes away some of the thinking for the humans to do. You might lose the ability to like bring in some innovative technology that could defend your network from the latest attacks. And of course, we know that the hackers are always going to be trying the latest things to get around whatever you have, be it CrowdStrike, be it Palo Alto, and, and, and so on. Now, the second kind of bias that uh, I see these cybersecurity AI systems is you can assume that the, the AI module that's doing the reporting or doing the detecting is perfect, but it's probably going to have to still be managed by humans in your environment. What if those humans are constantly reinforcing the wrong decision? One of the things we talk about a lot is that, you know, AI can make a new player, an entry-level person, you know, act like a, a, a senior, uh, a senior uh, a secure operations center uh, person or a, a senior cybersecurity expert. But if those people are doing negative reinforcement or positive reinforcement, basically, you know, looking at email and deciding whether it's spam or not spam, looking at logs, deciding if they're attacks or not, looking at these threats, deciding if they're an attack or not an attack. If the system you have is taking that negative feedback from those employees in your organization, you might actually take a good AI system that's been trained with some decent data and create something that's a lot less effective. And you're going to give yourself this false sense of uh, security because you know, your humans have tuned the system, so to speak, but you might have put it into a position where it's not effective at, at all. And there's ways around that to, to test, for, test for those things. You can do penetration testing. You can use products like uh, Scythe's uh, adversaries uh, emulation where you can actually just put malware and command and control traffic on the network and 
see if it is indeed uh, detected, which is something I think uh, more people should be doing as a way to understanding if their environment is correctly uh, instrumented. Now, the last type of bias is this concept that an AI system that's either you know looking at logs, looking at traffic, looking at some sort of telemetry from your, your cloud apps, if you're going to train it to look for malicious behavior, well, you're gonna be biased towards looking for the malicious behavior of what you've trained it with. So if, for example, if uh, you're doing something like Halcyon, where you've taken all of the known ransomware and created an AI model that's gonna detect variants of those things, that's, that's great. It's not gonna detect, you know, basically a new type of malware that's doing something outside of that ransomware family. And they're very open about that. They're saying very much they are a ransomware focused, you know, endpoint tool. I don't see that kind of discipline in most other technologies that are using AI to solve the detection problem. If you're working with a startup vendor who's looking, like I said, at telemetry, NetFlow, packets, logs, uh, access control logs, that sort of thing, where did they train that data? What did they use to train it on those people, uh, on those models? Uh, you know, and if they don't have, and what, how did they then update the model if a new threat comes in with new techniques? And this is something that's really, really an interesting type of uh, problem right now. Again, how do you prove that if you've got this AI sort of engine that's been trained with unknown data to look for you know, unknown threats, how do you actually test it? Again, I'll go back to a solution like Scythe where you can actually put it on the network and try to identify does the AI system you know, detect these types of, uh, of attacks and, and, and whatnot. When, uh, when we were doing Dragon, when customers out there like with Palo Alto, Sourcefire at Cisco now and whatnot, you know, one of the cool things about seeing more of a direct way of detecting things is you could look at their signature list and their algorithm list or the correlation rules, and you could actually see what they're doing and what is in the box, so to speak, and then we can talk about, well, do you have coverage for like in this week, you know, the latest connect uh, ConnectWise attacks and, 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 and whatnot. But with the LLM models, it's really, really difficult to say what's in the box. What have you really trained these things on to then go ahead and, and look for it? And again, if you have an LLM deployed looking for things in your network and it hasn't been trained on things that your network is exposed to, you are going to not have an alert. You're not gonna have some coverage that you think you have there. So so three examples, right? Is, is a vendor gonna use intentional you know, bias to only sell you things and recommend things on their on their platform? You know, are you going to be able to, uh, you know, have your employees be tested for if they're reinforcing those sort of negative things on on uh, on the AI there? And then finally, if you're using an AI an AI system to basically find bad things on your network, how was it trained? How was it? Is there? How do you know when it's uh, updating and doing its job? That's three things that uh, you need to watch out for if you're using AI uh, in your cybersecurity products to avoid the bias there. I'm Ron Gula. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more stuff, give us a like. Connect with us on LinkedIn. Uh, send us ideas for new videos. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.